What's up, Bug Dog with Dean in the Garage? As you folks know, or should know by now, I freaking love Jeeps, man, and I have some very severe opinions about other brands, specifically trucks, SUVs that use independent front suspension, all right? Let's dig into that a little bit, because I think a lot of people think it's just arbitrary. Like I just, I decided when I was like 15 that I'm gonna like Jeeps and I'm just not gonna hear anything about it. Uh, you know, to the contrary. <laughs> that is not so. I have some very real uh, arguments to defend my opinion. What you're looking at here is your standard um, solid front axle power steering setup. You got your pump right here right on top of the motor. Power steering lines, they go right directly right there to a power steering uh, box, your gearbox. The only thing you have to do on this Jeep and most Jeeps, remove the air box. Nice and simple. I actually have a video on replacing power steering lines in a, in a 4 liter. Uh, you can check it up there in the corner. I think it's a 7 minute video, maybe a 15, 20 minute process in total. Now, what I have in the garage over in the other bay is another story. Chab right here is a uh, Ford Expedition and like most Fords, it has a power steering issue. Uh, if you've ever worked on Fords, you know constantly, man, whether it's a Ford van, a Ford car, or this big, what are these things based off, the F-250? It's got a power steering leak, blue power steering. If it was a Jeep, shoot man, 20 minutes, in, out, done. Not on this thing. You wanna know why? Independent front suspension. Let's take a look at how complicated independent front suspension makes an engine bay. Let's start right up top, man. You got your reservoir way up front. That's nice. The problem is it's not directly connected to the pump like it would be on a four liter. Uh, it is got lines that run down to the actual pump. Not a big deal. Most vehicles do it that way. The problem is this. Here's the lines right here. There's one of them. Here's the other one right there. They just disappear, man. They just disappear into the engine bay. I got no idea where they go. On the four liter, your steering box is right here. I take this guy out, whole job's right there. So you're thinking, all right, that's fine. You get to him from the bottom, right? All right, we're under the beast now. It was at this point that it occurred to me, does Ford just hate its owners? <laughs> or do Ford guys not work on their own cars? Now, I'm kidding, of course. I'm not getting at you Ford guys. But this is a freaking mess under here. There's lines going everywhere. I got no idea what anything is. So you got two sets of lines here. They clearly go up to the radiator. That's what's right here for reference. Radiator, uh, front K member support, uh, axles right behind it. So these go to the radiator, uh, maybe transmission lines, transmission cooler. Then you got another one here that just seems to be passing through. I'm not even sure what it does. Uh, over here are two more. They're barely in frame, I know. But these also come from somewhere back towards the engine and then go up to what it looks like is a radiator. Maybe this has a power steering cooler. I don't know. Here's the thing. This guy right here is the one that's leaking. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but this is just all drenched in uh, Dex Merc, which is what these things take for power steering fluid. So we got to get in deeper. It's not immediately obvious which line it is. No problem. Let's go in a little further. All right, here's where the Videography is going to get a little rough because there's just not enough room to do everything we want to do. If you can see this line right here, that's the guy's leak, and that's your offending leak right there. You can see the uh, crimp on, must be a high pressure line, blew off. Now we know this is power steering leak and not a trans leak because it's the power steering reservoir that keeps going empty. So, this line right here, I don't know if you can tell behind it, all it does is come down this way and then loops around. Can you see it back there? That's the same line. So it loops around and it goes to somewhere. I can't even get in here far enough to actually figure out what it is. I know this angle's awful, but it's really illustrating my point. So it comes on the other side of this K member here. It goes this way, then it loops around, and then it's right here and returns back the way it came. What was it even doing over there? <laughs> you know what I mean? You can also see we got a couple more. This is a brake line. This looks like a fuel line. Over here though, these must be trans cooler lines. <sighs> the point is it's a friggin' mess. And the reason it's a mess is because you have to have a ton of extra stuff down here to make independent front suspension work. To make independent front suspension work, you need the pump and the reservoir. That's the same as on ours. Then you need this K-member, which is honestly what's giving me all the trouble here. This is what actually supports the, um, the vehicle. You can see over here is your control arms. That's control arm bolt right there. This is part of the frame. Um, and this is what everything that matters is bolted onto. Then behind it, you can just barely see it back here, is your actual differential. There's what, where the axles go. So you've already made 
a huge mess of the inside of this thing. Now the biggest problem with independent front suspension is the need for a steering rack, which goes in the middle of the vehicle, buried all the way up on top of uh, this differential here. They're hard to get to, and when they go they're expensive. You have to take a bunch of stuff out of the way, and because of how far up they have to be hidden, you can never get to them. Whereas a Saginaw steering box on a solid front axle vehicle is right here. It'd be hanging right here and there's a pitman arm that comes down and goes to your drag link. Everything is accessible. Nothing's accessible on here. Look how complicated this stuff is. Look how complicated it is. It's a mess. It's a mess. Over the weekend I had to do struts in a uh, Toyota 4Runner. Now, have you ever replaced a shock or even a spring on a solid front axle vehicle? It takes 20 minutes. Take the wheel up, jack it up, you can pull the spring right out, the strut pops right down. Nope, three hours. Because everything's hidden, everything's convoluted. Look at this stuff over here. Tie rods here, your CV axles there, your struts here. Don't even get me started on whatever's going on up top because you have to take half the stuff apart. You have to take ball joints out, brake lines off, just to get to the uh, stuff on top to get this strut out. And the struts are more expensive. And when components go on independent front suspension, you wear your tires out a lot worse. All right, you can make small adjustments. I could do a full alignment in the driveway on any solid front axle vehicle. And that thing's gonna be damn near perfect. Not so here. So what's the point? What am I really getting at? Point is, it's a bummer, man. Um, everything more and more is coming with independent front suspension. In fact, I think the only things that come with a solid front axle anymore are gonna be your Wranglers and then your heavy duty trucks. The only Jeep that has it right now, a solid front axle is the Wrangler. I hope that never goes away. I think you can get them in like big F250s, but your 150s are gonna have, maybe not, because I think that thing's based on a 250. The reason people don't like solid front axles are this. Uh, they can be heavier, but not always. Uh, death wobble. That's what scares people about it. They do give you a looser, rougher ride. But at the end of the day, man, if I'm driving a vehicle that can tow 9,000 pounds, I'm expecting a rough ride, you know? That's the thing that kills me about those expeditions. They give it to 5.4, it's a full frame. I don't know if it can tow 9,000, but it's something around there. It could tow a ton, at least 7,500. And they're trying to make it ride like a Cadillac sedan, you know? And I guess what ends up happening is you compromise a little bit of both. It's not as comfortable as you wanted it to be, and it's not going to end up being as capable or as durable or as rugged. This power steering issue that's going on the second day of work and isn't even going to be resolved today because the wrong lines were purchased, because we couldn't identify properly which friggin' line we were even looking at, um, this could have been a 20-minute project. Not on no Ford, not on no independent front suspension. So, the reason I even bothered bringing you all into this, understand, man, these old Jeeps, these dirty old four liters that we love so much and we beat the heck out of, they are something special, man. Simple, simple. They get a lot of flack for not being reliable. I don't know where the people, the people who say that these things are not reliable, they probably would only ever wanna own something with a 2JZ in it, you know? They just have no idea, they never gave them a chance. Reliable, simple to work on, durable. Beat the heck out of this thing. Everybody's, oh, unibody, unibody. Come on, man, the things I've done with <laughs> unibody Jeeps, I'll tell you what, man, that is a little lesson in the differences of independent front suspension and solid front axle and why I personally friggin' hate independent front suspension. I don't know, man. That's just me. Comment down in the squawk boxes as always. Thanks for watching. See you next time.